Over the past few years, Google Ads has made a few changes to the way that conversions are counted and organized in your Google Ads account. Now, it could be because I've been doing this for a long time or just because I'm a curmudgeon in general, but I don't think it's quite as clear as it could be. So one of those changes has been account default goals. There's probably a number of you that have seen that in your account, You're not quite sure what goes where. And I'll be honest, it took me a little bit to figure out what those meant and how to adjust them and to make sure that I had everything set up for my client's success. So in this video, I wanna walk you through what account default goals are, where you can set them up, and how to use some strategy behind them to make sure that you get the performance you need out of your Google Ads accounts. The first thing I wanted to take a look at is this table that shows the changes in terminology that Google has made over the past few years. As you can see here, before they started with conversion action sets, those are now being shifted to standard goals and custom goals. Included in conversion settings is now include in default goals and primary conversion action. I'll show you an example of this in a little bit. Conversion actions are still conversion actions, but now they are grouped by category into conversion goals, and conversion categories are still conversion categories. If you're anything like me, this doesn't help as much as I might want it to. To be quite honest, it's not nearly as clear as I think they might want it to be. So let's take a look at a couple of slides that I have that might help illustrate this a little bit better. Conversion actions are still conversion actions. So if somebody downloads a white paper, they sign up for a webinar, if they enter a contest, make a purchase, any of these things are still individual conversion actions. The difference now is that we need to group them into specific categories or standard and custom goals. So goals means a higher level category. There are three business goals for conversions on Google Ads, sales, leads, and further categories. And then down below, you can see the updated conversion categories that support each one. So within the sales category, you have purchases, add to cart, begin checkout, subscribe, Leads category has submit a lead form, request a quote, contact, a handful of other things. And the further categories are not nearly as useful. I don't think as many people are using them, so I'm not gonna pay as close of attention to them today. But here, where we talk about purchase or submitting a lead form, those might sound like conversion actions to you, but those are actually conversion categories. So the way this would actually match up would be that your purchase category has a purchase as the conversion action, but somebody actually checked out. So you might have check out as the specific conversion action in the purchase goal. One that might be a little clearer to identify is maybe a demo request is your conversion action in your submit lead form category. You might need to differentiate signing up for a newsletter versus something else in your subscribe conversion category. So effectively, we've added an additional layer of organization into your conversion counting in Google Ads. So that's just at a pretty high level, but we needed to cover this to talk about account default goals. And I think the easiest way to start by covering account default goals is to show you how they will impact the campaign creation process in Google Ads. I've jumped into a new client account, and if we were to go create a new search campaign, I would click the blue plus, new campaign, no goal, search, and this is where account default goals will have their biggest impact. When you're setting up a new campaign, all account default goals will be populated as the conversion goals and actions that you're gonna be optimizing for in that specific campaign. So what that means is that any primary conversion action in your account default goals will be counted in the conversions column, and it will also be used to optimize your automated bidding strategies. So let's take this apart a little bit further. You'll remember the naming convention of the conversion goals. So here, contacts and submit lead forms are the conversion goals for this account. The source is website. Conversion actions are those individual pieces that make up the categories. Each of these has three actions within the conversion goal of contact and submit lead form. Very briefly, you can adjust these at the campaign level, either by removing one of the goals that is here by default, or by adding a goal that is not already part of this. And I'm not gonna get too far into that because we already released a video about campaign level conversions that you can check out the video for right here. But instead, what I wanna talk about are how you can influence which goals are account default goals and determine which conversion actions in those goals 
and in those goal categories are being used for performance and conversion optimization. So let's head up into the conversion section of the interface, which is gonna be under tools and settings, measurement and conversions. And here things are organized a little bit better visually to hopefully help make you make sense of how these are gonna work. So first, each of these boxes that are in white are gonna be separated by a conversion goal. So here you'll see submit lead form is one of the goals that we saw when we set up a campaign. Phone call lead is a second one, and it is not set up as an account default goal, which we'll look at that in a second. And the third is contact, which again, you'll remember was in the setup process for that campaign. Underneath each of those are going to be the conversion actions. So here we have an email capture through a chat bot, we have a contact us form, and then we have a duplicate contact us form conversion action, but from Google Analytics 4, as opposed to Universal Analytics. It's very easy to tell which of these conversion goals are account default because it literally says it right next to it. If you hover over that, it'll give you the insight that says all campaigns will be optimized for these conversion actions. And then you can see how many campaigns are opted into this as an account default goal. Right now we have all 163 campaigns opted in, but if you were to use those individual campaign conversion actions like we talked about in that video earlier, this number would be different. There are a handful of things that I wanna call out on this page, and there's not really a good organizational order, so I'm just gonna jump in. The first is if you want to change your account default goals, either to remove one of the existing ones or include one that is not currently counted, it's pretty easy. Let's say we wanted to remove contact and all of its subsequent conversion actions as an account default goal. All we have to do is come over here to the right, click edit goal, we can then adjust and say, do not use contact as an account default goal. And then we would click save, very simple. But for this one, I actually wanna leave it here. So I'm gonna click cancel. And then the same is true if we wanted to include phone call lead as an account default goal, and therefore count it as a conversion in every campaign and every new campaign from there on out. So first we would go to edit goal, do just the opposite, use phone call lead as an account default goal, and then click save. Again, I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna click cancel. Now the next thing I wanna talk about are the difference in primary versus secondary conversion actions. Let's take this submit lead form conversion goal as the first example. Here, the first action item is demo request, and that is using website as the source. We then have two conversion actions below it that are actually just duplicate actions, but one is coming from GA4 and the other one is coming from Universal Analytics. Now you might wonder why we're tracking all three of these if they're doing the same thing. And the answer is to make sure that we have all of the different tracking sources being about the same. We have 32 demo requests, about 31 from GA4, and 29 from Universal Analytics. Overall, that tells me that all of these platforms are counting the exact same action, and they're all in unison, and that is a good thing for us. But the biggest differentiator is that we're only using one of them as a primary conversion action. The other two are secondary, which means that they are not being counted in the conversions column and they're not being utilized for automated bidding strategies. So let's take a look at a campaign really quickly. and I'll show you how that happens. I have this filtered for a specific campaign. Sorry, the name needs to be blurred out, but it's the best one to give us a visual into how this is working. I've got stats for last month. I'm just gonna segment by conversion action. So here we can see that we have the main demo request action and it has 36 conversions in the conversion column and then 36 in the all conversions column. The other two demo request actions are gonna be these two down here, the rollup from Universal Analytics and then the rollup from GA4. Now you'll notice that both of these only have conversions in the all conversions column, not in the conversions column. That is a telltale way to know that something is a secondary conversion action. It's not being included as conversions, but it is showing up in the all conversions column so you can still see how those numbers match up and troubleshoot any tracking issues that you might have. So here you'll see again, we have 36 demo requests, 33 coming from Universal Analytics, which seems right, but there's something up with GA4 because it's only tracking five. So that would be an issue that we'd need to look into, figure out why GA4 is not tracking appropriately and get that resolved pretty quickly. Now as a nuance to this, you'll notice here that we have phone call lead and this is set up as a primary action. But if we go back and look at that other campaign, you'll see in this top line here that we have calls from ads as a conversion action, but all four of them are showing up in the all conversions column. That's because the conversion goal of phone call lead is not included in the account default goals. So for any individual conversion action to show up 
in your conversions column and to also be used for automated bidding strategies, it has to be both in an account default goal and a primary conversion action. If either of those are not happening, it's only going to populate in the all conversions column and it's not going to be used for automated bidding. So that brings us to how we want to decide which conversion actions go into which categories and which goals are going to be the account default. Earlier I showed you this example to try and map out which actions can go where to give an example of how these work. And now we know that this top line is going to be a conversion goal or conversion category and you would set up purchase or submit lead form or subscribe as an account default goal. But this is a very simplistic way of looking at it. It could also be that you have a handful of conversion actions in each of these categories. Submit lead form is the easiest one for me to run through and it has the clearest examples. In your submit lead form conversion goal and conversion category, you might have a demo request, somebody who downloaded a piece of content, maybe somebody who contacted support, and then also somebody who signed up for a webinar registration. Each of those is a different type of form submitted on your website, so it still fits in that category, but those conversion actions may need to be separate to make sure that you know which ones are which. You also might wanna have the contact support as a conversion action so you can track it and see which keywords are driving more support queries, but more often than not, you're probably not going to want a support form as a primary conversion action. So that would be a key conversion action to set up in your account default goal, but only track it as a secondary conversion action. Now that we've talked about a little bit of an overview of how you might strategize on these, I wanna show you where this type of action will come up. In your conversion setup, every time you create a new conversion action, which I'll go through a couple steps here real quick, each time you create a new conversion action, your goal and action optimization need to be selected at the top. So first you need to select the category, whether again, purchase, add to cart, subscribe, contact, submit lead form. There's a lot of different options in here. You need to pick how these work, choose the one that makes sense, and then decide if you want it to be a primary or secondary action. If you create a goal that is not currently using a category that is already in use, so for this one, I know we're not using a book appointment just yet, you get the option to either add book appointments to an account default goal and include this as a primary action, or you can leave it off and have book appointments not as an account default goal. If you set it up one way versus the other and decide that you wanna go back and change it, remember all you have to do is edit the goal in the conversions page and you can get that all sorted out. But you can see that this is a really important thing when you're setting up conversion actions to make sure that they all flow into the proper account default goals or goals that are opted out of account default based on how you want to let your conversions influence your bidding algorithms and your conversions column. Now the very last thing I wanna show you is if you decide that you need to reorganize all of your conversion actions, which after some of this, some of you might need to do that, it's pretty easy to do. Let's say we wanted to move this contact us option out of the contact conversion goal and into a submit lead form. That might not make sense, but just to walk you through the steps, all you need to do is click on the conversion action itself, click edit settings, and then again in that goal and action optimization section, We'd open that up and then select a different goal category to filter it into. We can scroll down to submit lead form and then you can decide if you wanted to create it as a secondary conversion action or leave it as primary. And you'll notice it defaulted to primary, but if you wanted to, you could leave it as secondary, which is what it was in the other category. And then all you need to do is hit save. And then once you go back, now that contact us action is included in the submit lead form conversion goal and is still counted as a secondary conversion action. So as you can see, it's really easy to move these around. If you have an account that's been set up, it's been running a certain way for a handful of years, and you've decided that you just need to reorganize based on this video, and based on making sure that you're using your account default goals in the best way possible for your campaigns. This might not be one of the most advanced strategies in Google Ads, and it might not be the most complex topic. It is, after all, just conversion tracking but it's really important to make sure that all of your conversion actions are set up for either primary or secondary tracking, and that they're also included either in your default goals or added at the campaign level to make sure that they're included in your conversions column and that they're influencing your automated bidding strategies, but only if you want them to be. All of the settings that you have on this page are going to greatly impact how your Google Ads accounts performs, so make sure that you have everything buttoned up and everything is tracking appropriately. 
If you have any questions about account default goals or any of the other portions of Google Ads conversion tracking, please feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.